Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to another episode of the Next Team Podcast Formula 1 And uh, today is we are having episode 5 here and I'm your host Tarun Joining me as usual we have uh, TNT F1's two greatest minds that's uh, BK and Yash Hey so, guys uh, yep. Two greatest minds but we are the only minds uh. I mean <laughs> Yeah yeah I mean the two only other minds other than uh, Rikas as well who's yeah. not here with us today but mm-hmm. Yeah, so we are recording this a couple of days after the Austrian GP and I think it will be a little bit later that you guys actually get to watch this or listen to this because of our Euros videos that will be yeah. uploaded in the meantime. Mm-hmm. Uh, do check that out if you're interested. You can watch it or listen to it on our YouTube page as uh, as well as our Spotify page. You can find us on both these places as the next team, as the next team podcast. And you also have all our links in our Instagram page at the next team SG. Yeah. So, uh, back to the Austrian GP. So, first thoughts on the race, guys. Uh, first thoughts on the whole weekend. I think it was a banger. Yeah, <laughs> it was a banger, mm-hmm. and I think it went more or less as predicted. Uh, apart from Lando qualifying in P two, and I think Valtteri finishing in P two. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't really think. Uh, I mean, Verstappen won the race. We all uh, predicted that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait, uh, Tarun, did you predict that last week? I did. I said uh, Max <laughs> will take it pole to finish, which he right. did. Yeah, and he did. He led every lap of the race. Uh, he yep. got even faster in qualifying, which is to be expected if it's the second weekend on the same track. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, more or less a, I guess a pretty standard weekend. I guess nothing too crazy. Um, yeah. What about you, Yash? I mean, well, the crazy thing was happening at the back of the field with uh, George and George Alonso. and Alonso. Yeah, yeah, but we'll come back to that in a bit. But uh, yeah, like overall, it was it was a pretty interesting race. There was lots of battles going on. Mm-hmm. I mean, even Lando was actually challenging the Mercedes throughout the race. Yeah, he it wasn't was like yeah. he was on merit. It wasn't on um, you know any like uh, tire strategy or anything. Like on pure merit, uh, Lando was actually challenging Mercedes. So uh, it's very good to see. Yeah, and even Daniel came back. Uh, on a pretty good P7, I believe. Yeah, uh, P7. Carlos yeah. Carlos got him on the last lap. Yeah. Yeah. So it was it was very like a lot of uh, good things uh, going forward for a lot of drivers. Mm-hmm. Uh, like George, I mean, although he's unlucky to miss out on the points, uh, even P11 is massive for Williams. You yeah. know, to just be that Williams car fighting for points on yeah. pure merit, it's good to see. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, and it uh, mm-hmm. it sort of boosts. Uh, George Russell well not boost I mean we all know that George Russell was good anyway but that car is punching way above its weight thanks to yeah. George Russell uh, he Absolutely. managed to go he managed to get into Q3 this time so uh, yeah, congratulations P8, P9 I think right yeah he qualified P9, P9 he, yeah. beat he, he, he beat Stroll yeah. and uh, I think at that moment Williams whatever the race result was Williams already had a it's, it's kind of a win in their books because they already made Q3 which they haven't done in like like I don't know I forgot how many races they haven't done it but it's, it's been a very yeah. long time since they got Q3 I just remember the last last uh, Williams driver to make Q3 was Lance Mas- uh, oh really? Uh, I thought it was Massa uh, no 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 I believe it was Lance okay well it might have been either one of them because they both raced together right at Lance yeah Stroll's there was a bit of overlap yeah well, oh, well, it's, uh, it's okay. I, I can't remember who it was but yeah <laughs> it's, all, all we know is it's been a long time and Norris finishing P3 with a five second penalty as well so uh yeah. I mean, credits to him and uh yeah, yeah. Uh, i mean yeah. lando is just performing exceptionally this season yeah he's the only driver to be in the points throughout yeah uh his penalty i'm sure we'll get back to it in a while uh, mm-hmm. i felt yeah. it was unfair yeah but uh yeah he's just performing exception and uh, it kind of helped that uh you know lewis had a bit of uh car issues Mm-hmm. But then, uh, even regardless of the car issues, uh, his performance was like exceptional throughout the weekend. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it's it's very good I to see McLaren back up. Yeah, yeah, I think even before Lewis's uh, damage, actually Norris was matching both Mercedes is quite yeah. well. Yeah, well. quite well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Lewis couldn't pass him for I think about 15, 20 laps. I think at the start. Yeah, he was just yeah. right behind, and that cost Lewis a lot of time to max. Yeah, mm-hmm. and personally, if if you ask me, I think Norris almost led Lewis through, because McLaren know that they are not fighting with Mercedes, their battle is with Ferrari and the rest of the teams for the third spot, 
and uh, mm, I, it was a bit too easy yeah. for hamilton to get past norris i feel <laughs> and given the fact that hamilton immediately went on the radio and said lando is such a great driver it just <laughs> it, it 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 seems as if it, it it was just a bit too easy for hamilton i feel you know But, at that moment i actually felt that hamilton was rather praising lando's defense for like 15 20 laps rather than lando just you know letting him by. no 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 uh, i yeah, i i I, I, i i i agree with that also um i i'm just I'm just stating that uh, the 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 sheer nonchalance in Lewis voice <laughs> made makes it seem almost as if he didn't have to work for it but obviously yeah, he did. Uh, I just feel like maybe there's a chance that uh, Norris backed out a bit because uh, I think the McLaren team knows uh, pretty well that this is not their battle. Their battle mm-hmm. is for third and whatever comes after third is just a bonus. There's no point yeah. ruining a race just to just because you're fighting for second or something. And Absolutely. I think Mercedes are like way in front of McLaren anyway, right? Yeah. yeah I so mean McLaren are they're realistically only fighting for P3 in yeah. the, uh, in the construction. Yes. So right. They need to take that into account because the gap between them and Ferrari is like 20 25 points I think. Yeah. So it's it's quite it's quite tight there because one race can completely flip the entire yeah. uh feel around. You're right. Mm. And uh, I want to talk a bit about Ferrari if that's okay with you guys. Yeah, uh, yeah, of I course. feel is uh is embarrassing. that uh they have McLaren had uh, Ricardo only managed to finish P13 uh in qualify P13 and qualify. uh I think uh as a team especially a team with such a high budget such a big team you should be capitalizing on the mistakes that your quote unquote rivals are making like if Ricardo finishes uh qualifies P13 uh and you don't capitalize on it which has been happening for like Ricardo has been Uh, sort of kind of missing out on Q3 a bit this season uh, correct me if i'm wrong uh, but you are supposed to capitalize in every single opportunity mclaren at this point essentially only have one driver that is getting the maximum out of their car and ferrari are still lagging behind them which is frankly unacceptable in my opinion and maybe it's just because i'm a ferrari fan but it drives me nuts like the fact that there's a top 3 without ferrari sounds almost alien to me <laughs> but uh it's ridiculous and i feel well i mean they did come back in the race but uh ferrari should do better in the qualifies for sure uh i hope to see more like i hope to see improvement from them but uh if you if you fail to capitalize on the mistakes uh that ricardo is making uh you cannot beat them in the constructors i feel where did ferrari qualify again huh? uh 11th and 12th yeah. okay so means that george russell got into Q3 so he Yeah he was but I'll say to be Yeah but I'll say to be honest I think that kind of helped Ferrari in the race because that allowed uh Carlos to go long and then get a new tires towards the end which allowed him to finish P6 Yeah yeah mm-hmm. but yeah. but but it worked out for them in the race it doesn't yeah, always yeah. happen So a- absolutely yeah, yeah. <laughs> so to to kind of give yourself the best shot I feel you have to qualify as high as possible I think everyone will agree with that but uh yeah you just you cannot afford to not capitalize on the mistakes that your quote unquote rivals are making uh, or competitors are making to would it better uh, yeah i just hope to see uh, better things from them but then i think it's silverstone next right so yep. yeah, yeah. They, they are not going to do well uh, <laughs> uh, yeah that's it that's it about ferrari yeah i think it's just the the fact that austria has a really power sensitive circuit as well and right. that's not something that ferrari have been created yeah. this year yeah. or last year ever since they got caught cheating uh, <laughs> Let's yeah. not say yeah ever since they got caught how do you even word it like, ever since know. they came to a a, a confidential settlement the, with the, the FIA yeah what a load of garbage they should be embarrassed uh. Enzo <laughs> Ferrari is turning in his grave <laughs> but yeah uh mm-hmm. w- what has happened over the weekend uh um, I mean have the usual stuff that we talk about every race that's uh, Red Bull versus Mercedes yeah um another slightly depressing race for Mercedes but a great weekend for uh, Valtteri Bottas yep. must say yep. to finish P2 yep. and uh, I think he deserves one of these this this year la. this yep. has been uh, waiting I for think, a long time I think uh, Valtteri must have been crying while he was driving because uh, you know the Mercedes pit crew allowed him to overtake Lewis yeah. 
rarely happens. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I bet while he's driving and overtaking Lewis, he must be crying from the inside. Like, you know, something <laughs> happened for the first time for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. And I mean, ironically, they actually told him not to overtake just because, before yeah. they told yeah. him he can overtake. Yeah. I think that was just to, like, you know, cut the losses in a sense because if Lando caught Bottas, he would catch Lewis as well. Yeah. I mean, to yeah. be honest, Lando was just 1.5 seconds behind him. So Lando mm -hmm. was pretty consistent most part of the race. Like, but he just couldn't get into the DRS. I think he said in the press conference as well, hmm. at the post race, that uh, like when he got too close, like within a second, he just couldn't keep it up to that because of right. the you know, the dirty air and everything. So 1.5 at the end of the race, or no, I think it was 1.5 throughout. But then throughout like the last three four laps, he just backed off. Then yeah, and it was like two point. It was two point one at the end. Yeah. Yeah, two point one. Yeah. Um, but then he was he was pretty consistent, Lando. Like yeah, he, yeah, he was. He was. I, I felt that I was, like I had a bit of hope that maybe he could have overtook him for P two. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, and I, I'm I'm just gonna say the five second penalty for Lando was total garbage. BS. Yes, garbage. yes, total BS. Because uh, uh, yeah. I, don't I don't know, know man. Because you see, at that corner on the outside, I think just the last year, Alban had the same thing and he spun. Yeah. So I, I feel Perez should have known that better because yeah. the the corner is always standing outside mm -hmm. like you know it's curving to yeah, the yeah, right, yeah, you're right. right that already leaves you on a bit of a disadvantage because the guy on the inside is going to go a bit wide on the yep. normal ra racing yep. line yeah so what Perez should have done was i don't know if you guys remember charles had a switch back move i think on some yeah yeah but oh, that's a nice move yeah, yeah. so yeah. Charles was really clear. He went on the outside. He led the. I think it was it Ricardo. I can't remember. Oh, I can't remember who it was, but I yeah. only yeah. remember Charles. Yeah, you remember the move, right? Yeah, yeah so I do. I do. He let the guy go deep, and then he switched back. Yeah, and I feel that's what Perez should have done. It was. If he it was outside, inside, and outside, right? For Leclerc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Outside, that was a, was a yeah. good move. Yeah, uh, and I think personally, a lot of people are drawing parallels to this and uh, to the Perez and Norris incident, to the Albon and Hamilton incident. From last season, uh, on the day that the Albon and Hamilton crash happened, me and Tarun got into a heated disagreement. So I already <laughs> know that we're gonna disagree on this. But I feel at that, given that situation, because Albon was in front, like he got ahead mid corner, so I think that was his corner to take, and that's why Lewis got the five second penalty. And mm -hmm. this time, I don't think Perez had a. Uh, I don't Norris think Perez was. Ahead, was yeah, Norris was ahead throughout the corner, so yeah, he mm -hmm. doesn't get. Uh, so he shouldn't be penalized if Checo doesn't back out. It shouldn't work absolutely. that way. Yeah. Uh, Norris got robbed of P two because of that because he yeah, only finished absolutely. two point one yeah. behind. I would say, yeah. So uh, I it it shouldn't happen. But uh, Perez also, I mean, he had his fair share of penalties as well uh, <laughs> to do the same thing to Leclerc and then to do it again. Yeah. But to, to be yeah to, yeah to be fair, I think the second one. Second on, one was a penalty. I think. Yeah, the second one I, was definitely yeah. a penalty. Yeah, uh, maybe the first one, one was, was harsh. Bad. Yeah, first one was harsh. Yeah, I need. I didn't really see the replays on the first one. I just since it like uh, Perez getting a penalty doesn't really affect me. I didn't really pay much attention to the replays. <laughs> but uh, the one on Charles when Charles came around the outside, uh, is definitely a penalty. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I but to the thing that was uh, that made me so annoyed about that was, um, well no not so annoyed. The thing that makes me kind of feel for Perez for the second one is that people don't usually overtake around the outside on that part because there's no runoff mm -hmm. is curb and then gravel yeah, yeah. so uh, but you can see this Al 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 Alonso tried it on Russell and uh -huh. then he backed out of the very next corner yeah. which was smart by Alonso because if he kept it going there's probably going to be a crash there yeah. mm -hmm. so yeah. I feel that's that's sometimes like drivers need to take that into account like Perez especially for the Norris incident yeah. sometimes you just have to back out yeah. like there is no way you can't force your way through it yeah. and to be honest Perez he himself went out wide you know it wasn't like Norris pushed him all the way yeah, I right. think Norris left him a small gap not the biggest of gaps but then Perez just decided to go wide instead like yeah. slightly wide but even then it wasn't uh, Norris isn't obliged to give him the gap because he yeah. has the corner there yeah exactly, yeah, exactly. He's, he's, he's only the car in front yeah it's only when uh, I think the car on the outside is leading uh, and then you push them off I think that is uh, I think that's a penalty but mm. uh, yeah as we have discussed I don't think it happened so uh, the yeah. Norris penalty was a sham and it yeah, cost I mean, him dropped him off P2 man yeah that's yeah. Uh, that's three points which I mean every point is mm. important but uh, mm. it could be worse 
it will be worse. Yeah, absolutely. Because the I points... I think P2 would be Norris if he had finished, would it be his highest ever F1 uh, finishing uh, position, I think, P2. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, he, think... He's only got P3, I think, so far. And P2 and Monaco, isn't it? Was it P2 no, P2 was, uh, P2 was uh, Science. Science, wasn't it? Science oh, yeah, Monaco, yeah, yeah, so he just got P3 all the way so far. So yeah. P2 would have been his highest finishing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, but I, I think mean, the three points would have been more valuable for McLaren as the team. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They're like only 19 ahead of Ferrari now. Yeah, uh, mm. 19. Wait, let me check. Uh, well, my tables I, are not loading. I think <laughs> my math is right. It's 19. Ferrari uh, is on 122. McLaren is on 141. Yeah, they are 19 points yeah. behind. Okay. And, okay. Uh, Quick math. Yeah, and Ferrari, the thing is, Ferrari still have a chance, but that is purely because. Uh, McLaren's second driver is having because you know he's in the first season in the team and um, you know I, I guess you can kind of I, I understand why he's not performing mm. but honestly for him it has to hurt like I feel for Ricardo because he, he left Red Bull in the first place because he didn't want to be in the shadow of a young like a young gun and he goes to Renault it doesn't work out he gets a podium but overall I'd say his time in Renault is still like a bit of a failure and even Absolutely. after Renault become uh, Alpine, they seem to have regressed even further, I feel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, now he's come to McLaren. So he's kind of he's kind of in this circle and he's back where he started. He's, he's older. He's like, what, three, four years older. And yeah. he's back again in the shadow of a young gun. But it's still his first season. It's fine. Uh, as long as McLaren, if they've been um, improving, if they continue to improve, in the same trend that they've been improving. I can see Daniel, well, I mean, fingers crossed, I hope to see Daniel competing for a title soon. But uh, Lewis just signed a contract until 2023. So, mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, you never know. Uh, I mean, Kimi is 40, he's still driving, so yeah. you really never know. I mean, to be fair for Ricardo, I feel uh, he knows that McLaren have a good car. Yeah. So he himself is not worried about the team. You know, yeah. like that wasn't a case where he was at Renault where the team's car wasn't the best. Yeah, you know? right. Yeah. He was fighting for the back of the grid, uh, mid of the grid, rather than fighting at the top. Yeah. Uh, at least in the top five, at least. Whereas Lando has shown that this McLaren is more than capable of finishing yeah. in the top five. Yeah. Uh, competing with the likes of Perez sometimes and even uh, Bottas. Yeah. Because uh, those two are just not as quick as you know Hamilton and Verstappen. Yeah. And um, it's just about Ricardo trying to find his fit in the car. Uh, I think he's only having troubles in the braking. Yeah. So I read this interesting stat over the weekend. I think in slow speed corners, Norris was carrying about ten to fifteen kph more than Ricardo. Oh. So wow. if you take that's that, steep. Yeah, yeah, if you take that across yeah. a lap time, that's at least about seven, eight, tenths, which is what Ricardo is usually behind Norris. Right. And mm -hmm. because the field is so tight now, like if you remember qualifying, I think from top, like especially in Q one, okay, from P one to I think P fifteen was I think one point five seconds, which uh, is in quali. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. In Q1 I remember, Mendes, yeah. yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so mm -hmm. so the field is very tight now. So that's yeah. why Ricardo is not getting into Q3. Yeah. But I know that you know we all know the driver Ricardo is. It's yeah. just once you know he gets the confidence in the car he needs, I think he will be up there with Norris. Yeah, definitely. Uh, whether he can beat Norris is a different thing. Uh, but it's gonna be an exciting no, battle. But when... If you if you took the 2016 Ricardo that was in Red Bull and put him straight into this McLaren car right now. Him and Norris will have a huge battle at the at yeah. Uh, I think that, that's a difference as well because you know because he made a step into a car which is uh, arguably a lot slower. Yeah, it, it's 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 affecting his driving style because he's used to driving something which is a lot slower. So now that he has yeah. a slightly faster machine, it's it's he's finding it a bit difficult to drive it. I guess right. It's like similar to how Sergio Perez he made a move to McLaren in yeah. his early days yeah. and it didn't work out because McLaren right. was a slightly faster machine so he was finding it difficult to yeah. you know breaking and all that stuff yeah. so but, I mean I hope but how many know, how many races would you oh you just finished first, finish first. yeah I mean I, I was just going to say that I hope that he finds his speed soon so I guess that links up to you what you're going to say now right uh, no I was I was actually asking how how many races do you think because it's been 8 races right so far uh, and yeah. so how many yeah. races do you think he should be allowed this particular like how many races would it take him to get used to the car? Is what I'm asking. Uh, I mean, to be fair, as a fan, right, McLaren fan, I am not too concerned about the fact that 
if he's even behind Norris, right? It, if, if if like Ferrari are where they are and Norris is performing where he is performing consistently, I will not be worried at all. Right. I'll be okay mm-hmm. with Ricardo taking his time. Right. But then the question comes when Ferrari are actually getting better, closer and closer right. to McLaren. Then the pressure's on Ricardo to perform as well because you can't back Norris because Norris is only one driver. You need two drivers. You know, two drivers make a team. Right. So at the moment, I think it's okay. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I feel probably after the summer break, he needs to start showing the pace he has at least. Of course. Uh, well, okay. So uh, there's another side to that uh, that argument, which is uh, this works for McLaren only as long as Lando is in the race. Because F1, yeah, anything yeah. can happen. A tyre might blow. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so absolutely. currently McLaren are on 141 points. 101 of them are from Lando Norris. And mm-hmm. only 40 are from Ricardo. And both Ferrari drivers have more points than Ricardo. Uh, yeah. Sainz has 20 more points and Leclerc has 22 more points. So it just takes, and the gap between McLaren and Ferrari right now is about 18 points. It just takes like one one bad race and maybe Ferrari have like a one or two point lead on top. You you never know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I just feel that, uh, well, hopefully Ricardo finds his space sooner rather than later. Yeah, uh, yeah. For McLaren's sake at least. So, I mean, at least in Australia, it was pretty okay, I thought. Yeah. He started P13, finished P7. P7 got yeah. done by... That's a great uh, uh, recovery uh, drive from him. Actually, yeah. I feel this season, that's sort of been his thing. Like, he's, he tends to he tends to fall short on Saturday, but on Sunday, he makes up for it. So, yeah. if we... Uh, I know this is like... A, it's not really an accurate way of uh, gauging, but if he, fin- if he qualifies at 13 and he can end at 7, if he qualifies at 9... I mean, he won't end up at third, but he will definitely finish a lot more than third, yeah, yeah. Uh, seventh, because uh, we all know Ricardo has that overtaking ability. I mean, that's kind of the thing that he's known for. So, uh, yeah, as long as he, he needs to buck up on Saturday uh, so uh, so that he can get better results on Sunday, I, I feel. He's just falling a bit too short on Saturday, in my opinion. Yeah. I think, I think there's also the flip side to the argument, which is that uh, he's fi- currently finishing 7 because that's kind of like the theoretical limit that he can hit. Mm-hmm. Because he's like, qualifying uh, in 13? Uh, no, saying? even if he f- like qualified higher, uh-huh. the cars and the drivers in front are faster than him. Hmm. Okay. As compared to because if and McLaren. It, it, more, more often than not, if you, are, if you qualify around 8th or 9th this season, you're kind of in Ferrari territory. Because that's where they are. Sort of, and yeah. this McLaren is a hell of a lot faster than the Ferraris. So um, he'll at least be able to get a jump on them. That's the thing. You don't really mm. have to beat everyone else. You just need to beat the Ferraris to finish third. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, if you take Ricardo and if he has the pace which Lando shows, then, you know, I have no doubt that both the McLarens can be either four, five, six anywhere in that regard, at least. Right. Yeah, if, definitely. If, if he yeah. shows that pace. So you yeah. could say maybe with the, with the pace he has right now, P7 mm-hmm. is very good for Ricardo. You right. could say that. But we know that Ricardo has a lot more pace in him. So right. once yeah, he shows that pace, expectation is going to be a lot higher then. Yeah. Mm. Well, is there so I guess, about, yeah. yeah, go on, go yeah, on. I guess now he's still in his uh, honeymoon phase, kind of. Yeah. yeah. He just has to start performing soon. Yeah. Mm. He, needs to st- yeah. he needs to start moving to the honey badger phase <laughs> sooner. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I'm yet to hear the lick the stem and send it from him. Ah, uh, yeah. This season. <laughs> well, he has been a bit. Uh, actually, you can almost see it in his demeanor, right? He's. I feel he he was a lot more cheerful when he was at Renault, than now, but I think mm. that is I mostly so. because he he's being shown what the machine can do and what he is not achieving yeah, yeah. week in week out. So I mm. think this will pass for an athlete like him. It, it's normal. So yeah. Uh, yeah, hopefully he comes back stronger. I don't know if I'm reading too much about this, but I don't know if you guys saw Daniel Ricciardo's Instagram post. Uh-huh, so uh, last week was his birthday, uh-huh. and he posted. He didn't post anything last week because I think he had a quite bad race. I think I can't remember now. Yeah. But then now this week he posted and uh, thanking um, like all the fans for the birthday messages, and he talked about his race and stuff. But I just found that a bit, um, how to say. Uh, oh. Yeah, or like you know, after a week of your birthday, you are trying yeah. to. Right. I don't know. I I'm just trying to maybe think it of is that you know, is in that he can see what Lando can do. It's kind of just not giving him that happiness, which yeah, yeah. 
he knows he can do but he's yeah. just not able yeah. to do it at the moment yeah which is which is which is uh, expected almost yeah uh, it's expected yeah. of him yeah. yeah he finished 13th in stereo by the way uh, yeah. yeah so, so you, it's, that, a, it's that a bad weekend yeah. basically yeah. yeah so yeah Yeah, but I think as a driver, you would need to have that kind of a mentality where you see your teammate doing a lot better than you, and you would want to be in the same position. Right. If you're happy with what you have, then yeah. you know your your teammate is your first competitor, as they always exactly. say. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think uh, we've yeah, kind of covered the top part of the grid. Yeah. We've talked quite a bit about the penalties given out, and. Uh, I think we concluded that uh, Lando's was unfair. Checo's first one was pretty unfair. Second one was uh, quite spot on. And, I mean, there uh, are people actually saying the second one was also quite a sham. Uh, I I'm hearing it on Twitter, but yeah. And my opinion from the way I've seen it is that uh, Checo, while he was well on the inside and uh, Leclerc was on the outside, I think uh, there was a snap of oversteer which where he turned mm, right. Yeah. And that yeah. kind of forced Leclerc off rather. Yeah. So yeah. I would say. I don't know if uh, he made like that was intentional or whether he just had oversteer at that moment. Uh, right. We don't know, but then uh, if, if if he meant it, then definitely it's a penalty. Mm. But if if let's say uh, it was oversteer, then it's just a bit uh, unlucky in that regard. Then. Right. But then arguably that five seconds I feel is deserved for him. Right. Mm. Right. Right. And uh, we did talk quite a bit about Ferrari, and uh, now moving on. To I think what was one of my favorite drives of the weekend that will be Russell. Yeah, and, brilliant uh, weekend from him. Honestly, what a performance, yeah. right? Yeah, what a performance. To uh, miss out qualify. on, to miss out on Q three last week in uh in what eight hundreds was it? Eight eight thousands. Eight thousands. Sorry, okay, eight thousands, and to get Q three, uh, this race in six thousands. So <laughs> we're dealing with very very fine margins here, and. Cross, yeah. uh, He's honestly he didn't capitulate uh, last week. You know, after last week, and he didn't get Q three, and mm-hmm. um, he just came back stronger, which is awesome. I think the fact that it's the same circuit obviously helped him a lot, but uh, mm. that could be said for all the other drivers as well. So overall, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, very it's very a level playing field. In yeah, that sense. very very good drive. You're unlucky with Alonso. Um, yeah. And uh, I mean, that yeah. was a great battle. He really made yeah. Alonso fight to yeah, get yeah. in front. Because yep. uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, Alonso is trying a lot of different lines. Like yeah. in turn three, he mm. was going really deep, trying to get better traction out, yeah. and all that stuff. So, which is a bit unusual. You don't see drivers do that. You know, drivers would try to hit the apex. Yeah. But Alonso is instead trying to go wide of the apex and get a better get in, mix yeah. out of it. Yeah. So, I mean, he really made Alonso fight for that one point. Yeah. Mm. And it was great to see Alonso afterwards. You know, yeah. uh, being like, I think he said that if there's any driver he didn't want it, Russell to be the one. Yeah, he had to overtake or something, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. No, I think Russell was the one who said that if he had to defend from any driver, he wouldn't want it to be uh, oh, Alonso. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, yeah, Alonso as well is what thirty eight now, uh, still <laughs> enjoying his racing. His radio after the qualifying was very nice to hear. He was uh, he really seemed to enjoy that lap. So yeah. it's nice to see Alonso is not phoning it in for the paycheck or anything. He's actually enjoying his racing. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Which at least it's it's nice to have at least one veteran show some emotion on the grid, uh, unlike Kimi. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah. Ah uh, well, Kimi Kimi did show emotions at the end of the race, but, <laughs> but <laughs> <that's loud. laughs> I had no idea. I have no idea what happened there. You know, like both of them were, were genuinely just on their own lines, mm-hmm. um, yeah. totally apart, yeah. and, and they I just come Kimi together for no reason. Yeah, I yeah. think Kimi turned it a bit. Uh, Vettel was all the way on the outside. So yeah. There's no. Vettel had no fault there. Yeah, and I think after the race, he got like a twenty-second time penalty or something. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay, I have no idea that two, that two points as well. Yeah, two license. points on license. Yep. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Who? Uh, Raikkonen got the points on the license, is it? Yeah, yeah. Raikkonen. Oh wow. Okay, I, I should have. Pro- I probably closed the closed the race after, <laughs> after the, after Max won. But okay. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, they didn't show it until like during the ceremonies. Then they showed like replaced. Right. Effect, so, like, right. We didn't yeah. know. That's the thing. That speaking was... of uh, speaking of time penalties, boys, Yuki Tsunoda actually got two of them, for very <laughs> stupid reason. Same thing, uh, both yeah. times. Yeah, both same times. same identical things. penalties yeah. both yeah. times. Yeah. yeah, so that's uh, uh, Yuki has had. I maybe I expected too much of him when the season started because he had a fantastic showing Bahrain. in Bahrain. Yeah. Uh, but I think Yuki will be disappointed with himself. 
but he's very very young he's what uh 21 or 20 yeah. he's 2001 is it he was born in 2001 i think or so or 2000 well yeah. i mean yeah. either way uh i remember vettel and uh, hamilton once discussing on a press conference he was saying that uh the day i will think about retiring is the day i get beaten on the on the grid by someone born in 2000 So I'm pretty sure <laughs> yeah. it's already happened this season. I think Sunoda has finished above Vettel once. So yeah. <laughs> now nah, I'm just putting it out I mean, there. He, like, he did it again in uh, in, in Austria. Uh, in, oh, yeah. Technically. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, Sunoda Sunoda's performance have been sort of a coin flip this season. It's either yeah. impressive or it's terrible. And uh, but then again, first season in Formula One. So <laughs> if you're willing to cut Daniel so much slack for his first. Uh, season in a team, we should be able to yeah, cut yeah, Yuki. Absolutely. I mean, I, mean, you would, you I, would I guess it, from the rookie driver yeah, yeah, for the grid. Yeah. yeah, I mean, oh, I yeah. expect him to be slower in terms of his other teammate, which is Gasly, who we all know is an exceptional driver. Yeah, but then his penalties, I felt, was purely a rookie. I would, I, I would be disappointed with that, honestly, as a team yeah. boss. Yeah, because Yuki, it's not that Yuki has not raced at this track before. Austria F two comes yeah. to Austria as well, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. So, he, He has raced on this track before. He knows that you know you have to stay on the inside of the pit yeah. pit line, mm. and I mean he didn't exit it too much, but then it's it's just really yeah. stupid, man. I like, mean, but it's all about margins, I guess. And absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's been two races there, and like nobody else has gotten that. And he yeah, and he fight, so. he just had a race last weekend there. So yeah. why would he? It's not so that? much the penalty itself, but the fact that it happened two times. Twice. Exactly. That. Yeah, that's why. Wait, but he pitted twice only, right? So yes, so each pit stop yeah. he 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 messed up, yeah. so that's a yeah. that's a hundred percent failure rate, dude. So <laughs> yeah, he should be disappointed with himself, but uh, uh, hopefully he comes back stronger. I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Towards the back, Vettel is okay. Vettel DNF. Uh, yeah, he had a crash with Raikkonen. Uh, yeah. Is that Wait, all? Did, did Kimi finish the race? Uh, After the crash, yeah, I yeah, want to say did. no, but he, no, it says plus one lap, so he yeah. did, he did finish. Wow, Vettel yeah. didn't finish. I think he got beached on the gravel. I think Kimi was able to ah, drive himself right. up. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it, really. I think the only DNF which really happened was Ocon. Ocon yeah, Ocon oh, lucky. we have yeah. to talk about Ocon, man. Ever since he penned the contract, he's been having a horrible time. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's I think been Austria so just bad. not a friendly place for him. Yeah, both, uh, both the races. Well, it was he was out on the first corner, right? So out yeah, on the first corner. Yeah, around the first corner. It, it is the first corner, yeah. So yeah. out on the first corner, this race, and uh, I'm trying to find the what happened. I believe someone race. someone took him out. Who was it? Oh, was it Kimi? Jo- Giovanazzi, was it Giovanazzi. Giovanazzi I, I remember it was one of the Alfa Romeo. Yeah, it's Giovanazzi. You mean in Austria, Giovanazzi. is it? Uh, yeah, in yeah, Austria. Austria. Last week. I mean in Austria, he was sandwiched in between two cars. Yeah, it's it's uh it's not it really his fault. A Haas on the left. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh it's Giovanazzi. It's just unlucky. It's Giovanazzi. Yeah, it's just Giovanazzi. Yeah, it's just really unlucky. Yeah, that was really unlucky. Yeah. And uh, I mean, speaking of uh, Haas, Mazepin uh did piss off Kimi in one of the practice sessions. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Wait, you guys want the emotion the from uh, the the, the ice man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, we all know Kimi has has an angry side. <laughs> I wanted to yeah, see more. I, I I always want to see more of wholesome Kimi. You know, like <laughs> ice cream in Sepang kind of Kimi again. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, but I think those days have passed him. I guess being a part owner of the racing team, maybe also <laughs> kind of takes the. So <laughs> if say a rookie was to impede your way. He's kind of getting in the way of your entire company, so yeah, of, co- of course you get angry. Uh, yeah. But I, I mean, mean, I mean, Kimi did say Netflix. He's just here for the. He's, he's just as a hobby. Yeah, yeah. he's here as a hobby. <laughs> oh, yeah, what true. a boss, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> uh, such a boss. And like he he said that he's here as a hobby, and somehow he's still here for this season. <laughs> but yeah. of course, he's also. It's a just very good at his hobby. I mean, can't yeah. blame him. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a good hobby. And uh, yeah, and then being Mazepin, just being Mazepin, so there's nothing really to talk about <laughs> over there. Um, and I, I really want to see Mazepin beat Schumacher on pure merit. I've not seen that this season. Oh, I think. It, I think we'll be waiting a while. I think I think it's a long time coming, bro. It's, yeah. I mean, didn't Schumacher like finish a lap ahead of him, a few races back? Was it Baku? No, it wasn't Baku. Yeah. 
I can't remember, but yeah, I, I know I what it's a few yeah, races it's back. Always here. very ahead of us, dude. It's mm. it's not happening anytime soon. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, we can't really judge that as well because we don't know how uh, Haas have been playing the strategies because they've just not been getting any camera time. I would yeah. be very surprised if I mean if Haas really have much of strategy to begin with. Because they're always at the back, right? I mean, I'm kind yeah, I, of I, Yeah, I know it sounds like joking, but I'm actually quite serious. <laughs> like, I'm quite serious. But uh, since they're at the back of the pack, I don't think any strategy they can come up with matters. And even if they do, the preferential strategy will be given to the investor's Guys. son. No, like, the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, I think okay. it's... Uh, yeah. yeah, and the, the way... Well, I, I just feel like if they had a strategy, the stronger one would be given to Mazepin. I just uh, I, I have that vibe I might be wrong yeah. but I have that vibe no, I, mean, I, I, I just don't know what's going on in the back, back there yeah. I mean I, I just I'm just saying it's a pure just because Mazepin gets a lot of hate yeah he does which well mm. arguably it's you know questionable to me yeah. um, <laughs> but I, I mean I'm just saying that you know since he's in the sport I think now we should just try and see what he can do try to support him All right but uh you know if he doesn't show that he can be in a the spot then i guess definitely you know yeah there's a lot of other drivers who deserve that seat instead, right but hasn't been great for him so far yeah yeah but but we all know he's not going anywhere for yeah. the next two or three years ah, yeah that's true unless he has to go back and do his army service or whatever yeah <laughs> this conscription in russia uh i don't know i just re- i was reading some article about he might not be in the grid next year because oh. he might have to go back and do he's the, he's the son of an oligarch dude he's not enlisting into any army he's not happening uh, I mean the father I mean, yeah, would the so. army off yeah it's, <laughs> I don't think it's happening but I mean yeah. uh, well we'll wait and see <laughs> yeah uh, you guys want to move to the next topic mm, yeah I think we've pretty much Covered. rounded off the back of the grid yeah um, so that's uh, that's it for our rundown on the Austrian GP I guess we should talk about Hamilton's new contract for a bit. Yeah. Until 2023. I kind of saw it coming anyway. Yeah. I Even though I was like crossing fingers hoping for him to retire. But mm-hmm. it was going to happen. Mm-hmm. I think right now he only really has uh, one goal in his mind. I think he would... I Personally, I think he wants to beat Michael's record. And then uh, I think he'll yeah. just retire. I think Absolutely. there's no reason pushing... And I think he wants to try and see how the new cars are as well next yeah. year. Yeah, see, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. But like according to papers, the new car should allow better following, better racing and stuff. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, if that racing is what Hamilton probably wants, then he might stay even further because he's right. only 35, 36. So, he can stay at least four or five years easily yeah. in a sport. Yeah. And uh, I, fitness is not an issue for him. Yeah, right. Absolutely. And I, I have, I think, almost two high hopes for the, for the, for the regulations coming up. Because I really want to see racing again. I, I want to see like proper racing where anyone can beat anyone. It's not mm. going to go to that level, obviously. But I just want to see a bit more competitiveness. I think this season is actually fine. Because you have Pretty McLaren. Good, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's very, very good. You have uh, Red Bull on top and Mercedes maybe stumbling a bit. And I'm trying to see if McLaren can sort of capitalize on that. See where Ferrari finish. And <laughs> I, I think it's quite. I think it's been quite a nice season so far. I think, we have a... I think this year it's been more of like a, a, like you have different batches of competition. Right. You have uh, up top you have Ferrari. Uh, sorry, up top you have Red Bull and uh, Mercedes. <laughs> oh, sorry, Red Bull and Mercedes, and uh, just behind them there's the McLaren and uh, Ferrari. Uh huh. And then you go a little bit further down, we have uh, Alfa Tauri, Aston yep. Martin, and Alpine all in the competition. Yep. And mm. you know there's uh, Alfa Romeo, Williams, and Haas just trying not to finish last, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah. So it's a uh, yeah. It's like pockets of competition. It just mm. let's hope to see all of them sort of like the gap between these pockets kind of a little bit a, a little bit closer. Yeah, yeah. Next year. yeah, it'll be better. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I think I just want to make one bold prediction before right. we go forward. I feel Russell's going to get that Mercedes seat next oh. year. Oh, you know what? I back you on that. I one. I hundred I feel, I'm feeling it very strong. Dude, right you know there was a there was a, I don't know if you guys saw this, but there was a Formula One. Uh, they uploaded a video. It was called uh, mm-hmm. "Team Bosses Uncensored" or something. Like oh, they they, right. they 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 asked all the team bosses uh, a question, mm-hmm. and then they would answer. And mm-hmm. uh, they asked Toto Wolf if you could have one driver from the grid uh, right now as your third driver, as in not as a third driver. If you have a third car, mm-hmm. who will be driving that? And he immediately said George Russell. So <laughs> it doesn't look good for Ocon right now, but. Uh, 
but he, at least he has a contract until what 2024 yeah, I mean, he just signed his new contract so yeah. would be yeah. so uh, hopefully he'll be i think alcon will be vying for that hamilton seat once it frees up so oh. yeah we'll see if it happens i mean yeah. he's he's oh, alcon so part of uh, mercedes yeah he's represented by total wolf yeah oh, okay. that's correct yeah I don't think he's under Mercedes anymore. Yeah, but he he's is represented. His by agent Total is uh, Total Wolf. Well, just just a side track. I feel that um, well, Hamilton's contracts end in 2023, and Verstappen's contract ends in 2023 as well. Oh, it's uh, a saying. <laughs> no, but I think honestly, I think Helmut, I think Helmut Marko will give up an arm and a leg to keep Verstappen in that. Absolutely. Room. I think they're gonna yeah. pay him whatever he asks because you can't have him. Okay, let's say he wins it this season. You can't have him taste victory and then move somewhere else, because yeah. if he moves there and he starts winning with Mercedes, that's it. It's Hamilton and and Hamilton must happen all over again for Red Bull, and I don't think uh, I don't think it'll happen. By Hamilton must happen, I mean that there's a strong di- driver in the Mercedes side, and Red Bull is maybe mm. lagging a bit behind. Ah, uh, right. So I don't yeah, think yeah. they can. I don't think they can afford that. I'm. I think that kind of thing keeps them awake at awake at night. <laughs> I think uh, Christian <laughs> Horner. Christian Horner sleeps beside his cell phone. Just any time that Verstappen feels like he wants a new contract, he's just going to give it to him. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I'm just checking you guys. If Verstappen wins this uh, season, will he still be the youngest uh, driver to win the championship, or has he lost that chance? I, I think he has lost his chance. Yeah, I Seb was yeah. 23, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, <laughs> Seb was different, man. Like yeah, was, but, but I, mean, I think to be honest, also Seb came into the sport a lot later. Yeah, because I think he came in two thousand seven, was it? Yeah, seven, I think, and he won in twenty ten. Whereas uh, Max has been in the sport since twenty fifteen. Yeah, 15, he was. I think six years now. He he got his super license before his driver's license, so <laughs> yeah, he's very that's very young. <laughs> Interesting. Honestly, it's almost impressive that he came in in such a young age and. Yeah, he's able mm. to just like. I mean, because of Max specifically, they changed the super license requirement. Now you have to be at least eighteen. Yeah, he's yeah, it's so crazy. Max is the wow. youngest record to be an F one driver for sure for quite some time now. Mm. Right, and it's probably not going to change until they change the super license regs. Super license, yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, I don't think he'll be the youngest championship winner anymore. He'll be twenty four by the time the season ends. Okay, so Seb was twenty three years and one hundred and thirty four days old. Ah. Uh, So mm. he missed it by one season. Um, yep. Christian Horner was actually very. Uh, I think a few seasons back he was very, very, uh, almost hell bent on making Max the fastest. I uh, know not the fastest, the youngest uh, champion. And uh, mm. I think the the cars. I think Mercedes were just too good. But uh, you know, yeah. better late than never. I think twenty four is still a very, very young age to be a champion. And Absolutely. I think okay. Max. If if Max wins this, he's he has. At least one championship guaranteed. I think he's gonna win definitely. Cause the moment Lewis retires, he's the best driver on the grid, and I don't think yeah. anyone is beating him. So uh, I, it's just a case of whether he wins one or whether he wins four or five. So we have to see. Uh, Formula One does work in eras. So you know we had the Schumacher era, we had the Hamilton era, mm. and I think it's maybe I think maybe the Verstappen era is starting. We'll see what the new regulations do. Um, yeah. 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 That's it. Yeah, and speaking of new regulations, there is a new qualifying system that is coming to Silverstone, which is uh, it's currently confirmed for Silverstone, Monza, and uh, one more that it's uh, not confirmed yet. So basically, what this new system is is that we will now have uh, Friday with one practice session, and after that there will be a normal qualifying session mm-hmm. that you know that we have now with Q one, Q two, and Q three. And this will determine the qualifying grid for the sprint race that will happen on Saturday yeah. after a uh, 60-minute free practice on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the results of that sprint race will determine the actual starting lineup for the final for the Sunday Grand Prix. Yeah, yeah. is uh, so, yeah. Uh, you want to just give your thoughts first? Yeah, um, I just feel like this is bringing forward the race a little bit more. Yeah. And it's just uh, they say they want to promote competitiveness with this, but I don't think that's what's happening. Yeah, really. I don't see what's happening. Uh, I don't see that. Uh, I don't see that happening as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think uh, I I kind of think it's almost a ploy to increase viewership 
for Saturday because as F1 fans we all look forward to Saturday. We know mm-hmm. for a fact that Saturday is the is the fastest day of the weekend. Uh but the layman doesn't know that. And uh if they see anyone who's scrolling through channels seeing that there's a race on, they watch the race. I just think it's a ploy to attract more of those kind of people because mm. I mean F1 fans we're going to watch the sprint race no matter what even yep. if it's a snooze yeah. fest because it's a new format right like I yep. just yeah. think they're kind of trying maybe like a way to to get more viewership um I maybe I'm a, I'm very conservative but uh I I like the current system uh, <laughs> but everyone mm. is re- uh, everyone is resistant to change at the start uh anyway there's like the proper qualifying system takes place anyway uh is the proper qualifying on friday or saturday for the sprint it's on friday friday i mean come on then you have 3 days of entertainment so you yeah, have yeah, yeah. you have three a qualifying on essentially yeah i mean that's awesome cuz a lot of people <laughs> skip friday anyway cuz it's just yeah. free practice so it's almost a it's pretty smart uh, move actually i'm quite impressed uh it will definitely uh, increase viewership yeah yeah right No, I just want to ask like before I give my views. Uh do you know how is the tire allocation going to be like? Cuz if we have qualifying on Saturday, so I believe they'll use that or or you know, qualifying Friday, you'll use that for Saturday, right? Yeah, yeah. Saturday's race. So how is Saturday's tire allocation determined? I or is it just Okay, no, right? it's okay. So here's what it is is they they will be given one set of tires for the practice session on Saturday mm-hmm. and teams can decide which compound they want to do. Okay. And they will be given another set for the sprint race itself. And okay. teams get to decide that as well. Okay, so how and does have... how does the tire you use on the sprint race affect what tire you use for the race? I don't think it does actually. Okay, so, so basically, is... you're free to choose any tires for yeah. the main race. So if it's a free choice of tires, then I think won't everyone just go on softs for for the normal qualifying on Friday? Um. Yeah. Quite likely. Yeah. <laughs> if there's no choice, then everyone's going to take the fastest compound. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean I guess uh we find that out how you know the whole system works. Yeah, I, really I, I, I don't really think I I don't think that would be the case because if everyone takes softs then you are kind of tr- throwing the tire management out of the window. Which I mean I that's one of the race. That's a point of spin race. Yeah, I think that's you one of the points of spin management. race. Mm-hmm. You just want the drivers to go all out and uh, just yeah. give it everything they've got. Oh, well, it's what 60 minutes race is it? It's a uh, 100 km. 100 km. So that's God knows what that is. Mm. Arguably, <laughs> or it's probably twenty thirty minutes then. Okay. Uh, yeah. Apparently, it's a roughly one third of the yeah. full race. Yeah. So it's probably about twenty thirty minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I just it's just a short explosive action for everyone to enjoy. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I will save my judgment until I, until the end of this weekend, I guess. Mm-hmm. Next episode, next I'm weekend. sure we'll yeah. I next episode, I'm sure we'll discuss it. Uh, at length. For me, I feel it's it's a good. I mean, I'm. I'm I'm I like new change basically. Yeah. So I'm keen mm-hmm. on seeing how it plays out. Uh, will it improve racing? That's uh well debatable. Mm-hmm. I feel Saturday will be fun, yeah. but my main concern is more for Sunday. Right. Because let's say if you you know because Saturday if you determine the cars who finish the fastest, so if you're going to start them because you know if you start them on Sunday the same way because you know. How the current system works is, you know, you're qualifying. You have the fastest car. Right. So even though some cars they might not have the race pace, they have that quality pace to be up on the grid and yeah, maybe yeah. cause a bit of different, like yeah. Lando does, yeah. for example, the McLaren. You know. Yeah. So um, I don't know if that that will still play a part because if you know if that's how the grid lines up, let's say the race grid lines up the same way on Sunday. I hope you guys get what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I am. I am. I I get it. Yeah. The the so, polar opposite of oh, go on, go on, go on. Finish first. Yeah, so I feel that might make the Sunday's race a bit mundane. Right. But at the same time, I feel maybe because if there's a free tire choice for Sunday, then then that could spice things up because a lot of different drivers could help for different strategies, mm-hmm. and being the fastest, then you know there is a lot of uh, variability with the strategy, which might help some of the drivers who are arguably slower on the fastest tire to maybe go up. I don't know. Right. But I guess we'll see it after Silverstone how right. it plays out. The polar opposite of that will be. A driver that's struggling in qualifying but kills it during race day, which is Ricardo. So mm. if mm-hmm. we take what happened uh, this weekend or last weekend as any sort of benchmark, so let's say uh, last last weekend Ricardo finished thirteenth in the qualifying. So on Friday's qualifying, Ricardo finishes thirteenth. 
on the sprint race on Saturday, he finishes seventh. All of a sudden, Sunday is starting on seventh. So mm. that's uh, if you take the race results yeah, of yeah. Austria and say and you just put it as the starting grid, he's beating both Ferraris in the race. Absolutely, no questions mm. asked. So uh, it's maybe it's a, it's a, it's a good thing in terms of Ricardo and drivers mm. that tend to have that race pace, but just kind of lose it a bit in qualifying. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I guess we'll know. I want to see. Speaking now that we've discussed it, I am actually looking forward to it. Uh, <laughs> three days uh, should be pretty fun. I yeah, yep. I mean, uh, I'm. I feel it's it's a good play. Like we as F1, right? We need to try different things out. You know, right? Try things which you know might improve the entertainment as well and the racing as well. Yeah, so I believe that's a case of both, like with the spring race, because you know, like you said, BK, we're gonna have three days of action entertainment. Yeah. Because honestly, at the, I mean, I'm not saying Friday is bad by any means. Now it's just that Friday is not entertaining. Right. A lot of us tend to skip it. I, yeah. I'll admit it. I skip Fridays. Oh, dude. And YouTube. I just focus on Saturdays. Yeah, exactly. YouTube. I just skip Fridays and focus on Saturdays and Sundays. Right. So in terms of entertainment wise, that's definitely good. So that's mm-hmm. going to bring F1 viewership and money as well, mm-hmm. which I hope is not their point because at the end of the day, we want to see the cars closer and racing. Yeah. So uh, yeah. whether that's going to happen, I guess we'll only find out when we try it out. Right. But we cannot just have like one race, like let's say Silverstone. We need to have our proper judgment after the three races. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I guess so. Yeah. But yeah, we can, you need more yeah. data basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Yep, so final verdict, we'll have to decide at the end of the third race, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, going on to our upcoming race predictions, which is right. obviously Silverstone. It's uh, happening 16 to 18 July, which will be next weekend. Not this weekend, but the following weekend. And it's going to so, be full house. Yeah, it's going to be full house. It's going to be <laughs> yeah. greater person capacity. Yeah. Even yep. for football now, I think recently they announced that uh, they are going full capacity in stadiums sooner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the Euros and finals and finals yeah. will so, be full house. Finally, no, I don't think so. I think 60%. Last... If it's after 19 July, I think it will be 100%. Uh, okay. So, are we, okay, right. are we talking about Silverstone? Silverstone is 100 or 60? Yeah, I'm talking Silverstone is 100%. Okay. But I'm talking like if you're talking about football, if I'm not wrong, it's nine... after 19 July, it's 100%. Right. Uh, okay. Mm. So, um, uh, yeah, I think I think yeah, I think it'll be nice to see the crowd back, because mm-hmm. uh, last season we actually had an amazing race with Max almost catching Lewis. Uh, oh, wait, was oh, that the, yeah. there were there were two races in Britain? Two right? races. Was yeah. it the first or the second one? I can't remember now. Yeah. but I know it was in Britain. F- yeah, I want to say first because we know there weren't two uh, British Grand Prix. I'm pretty sure the second. I one think was it was the 70th anniversary. One was. I think. One was the seventieth anniversary yeah. celebration. Ah, uh, whatever. Race. They both happened in Silverstone, so yeah, they I mean, did. yeah. Yep. So if there was a crowd on for that, it would have been crazy. But I think oh, it's yeah. nice to finally see a bit of crowd uh, back. Actually, the crowd in Austria was actually pretty crazy. After oh, yeah. after Max won, by the time he hit the first corner, the aerial cameras couldn't pick anything up because of all the yeah. orange smoke. So uh, Dutch be, fans are nice. crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to have the fans back. <laughs> yep. So, uh, predictions wise, uh, Tarun, you want to go first? Oh, um, I, I mean, it's, it's a really big race for Hamilton, obviously, mm. home race. So, I fingers crossed that he wins. But, right. um, how are we going to do this? Are we going to give quality predictions? No, for... let's just, uh, you guys just want to do the sprint race. Yes, yeah. No, because right, yeah. we let's Whoever, just yeah. Let's just say who's gonna start on the first yeah place grid on Sunday yeah. and uh, who's gonna win it. I will say Max will take pole, and uh, hopefully Hamilton to win it. Okay. Uh. Okay. You want me to go next? Uh, yeah. Sure. Okay. I think uh, even last year, yeah, in uh, well, actually, I can't use last year's result. Anyway, that's out the window. Uh, I think uh, in terms of Verstappen and Hamilton, I think uh, Verstappen's been killing it. So I'm gonna continue to back Verstappen uh, to win Red Bull have by far the fastest car on the grid they shouldn't really have any problem and uh, given their their sort of dependence on downforce and their cornering speed is higher than the Mercedes Mm -hmm. and uh, so that'll give them a lot of uh, they can carry more pace through the S's I feel so that'll give them a bit more time so I'm gonna say Max Pole and Max to win okay Uh, for me I guess 
I feel maybe on Saturday Hamilton might come back. Mm-hmm. Uh, or at least I'm hoping because maybe the Silverstone crowd and with Mercedes because Mercedes are generally pretty good at Silverstone, let's not forget that. Yeah, that's true. And with this two weeks break, I feel Mercedes can find that 2-3 tenths which is the gap between two uh, Red Bull or yeah. Max at least. So maybe I'm hoping for a close qualifying on Friday. Uh, as of the sprint races and stuff, I don't know how it's going to be. But I think overall, I feel I think Max might come out on top. Yeah. Because I think uh, that uh, Red Bull have a lot of better race pace at the moment, at least. Although it might seem like sometimes Mercedes do have the better race pace, but I think, uh, like BK said, the overall package uh, Red Bull have the better package. Right. So I think it's going to be tight, and my bold prediction is going to be Russell into the points for his home race. Okay. Oh, it'll be nice to see. How great would that be? Yeah. 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 I, I will, I'll take that. Uh, I'll take that. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, let one of the Ferraris finish without points. Okay. <laughs> Anything to see Russell get some points, man. Uh, whatever happens, we all know Gasly is going to qualify in sixth because that's, that's a thing <laughs> nowadays. Uh, Mr. Six. Yep. Yeah. So, is What's Gasly's car number? 10. Yeah. Oh, okay. Close. <laughs> I, I thought it was six for a moment. I don't know why. Uh it's, would have been even better but yeah, no yeah, yeah it would have been much better but <laughs> yep yep um, so that's our predictions come back in two weeks to find out how wrong we were as usual <laughs> um, so anyway moving on to our last segments of this episode end of the week let's go what do we have uh, I'm gonna have to say even though Perez had two penalties, I think uh, he still finished in the points. So I'm going to have to give it to the man with the other two penalties. I'm going to say Yuki Sonoda for making the same mistake twice. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's a good call. Uh, I, would. I mean, I like Yuki. He's a yeah. Yeah. angry bird. Fun to watch. But this yeah. week, it's on yeah. him. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. For me, the L of the week is not a driver. But mm-hmm. it's rather a race, which is going to be Australia, which is going to be cancelled. Ah, uh-huh. yeah, because yeah. I really love Albert Park as a circuit. Yeah, mm-hmm. although it's not the most, you know, fancy of the circuits for overtaking and stuff. But as a spectacle, Melbourne, heart of the city, it's like you know Singapore, how we have a race in downtown, similar, yeah. similar thing in Melbourne, street race. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're gonna miss Melbourne. I think it's it's always fun, like especially as a beginning, like start of the race and uh, like start of the season. Melbourne's always a great spectacle to be in. So hopefully we go there next year in 2022 at least. Right. Yeah. Hopefully. 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 Yeah. yeah. I feel like it's it's just the, the right place that you want to start off the season. Yeah. So maybe this year not so much, not missed as much, but uh, yeah, yeah. I really hope we can start the next season there next year. Right. Just a, just a surprise tint a bit. Huh? Because, you know, we have a slot there now with Austria, Australia going off. Mm-hmm. So organizers are looking for like one more race to fill up. Um, that I, I don't think there's rumours of this but what if organisers because you know uh, being in November I think Australia is like organised to be in no- November right this yeah. year mm-hmm. yeah. being in November it's going to be hard to have races in Europe because of winter Yeah. and North America as well because they'll have winter so the only logical place to go is Middle East so maybe see a Jeddah double header Oh, or something. No. Oh. Oh. Can we go back to Bahrain? Dude, I don't. <laughs> Can we take on the oval? I don't have much hope for Jeddah <laughs> as a circuit, to be honest. Yeah, uh, true. But, yeah. you know, I I was actually hoping almost. At least it's not. At least we don't get Abu Dhabi double header, I'll be happy. Yeah, right. <laughs> but who knows? They, they made those changes to the track. What if it actually becomes a raceable circuit? No, yeah, I mean, we shall see. Mm. Yeah. I was kind of but hoping. Yeah, I... I was kind of hoping it'll go back to South Africa, maybe. Because uh, it's oh, been Kailami. very long since we went to Kailami. South Africa. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, but the uh, thing about Kailami circuit is I don't know if you guys know it's it's not a great one. It's great two rather. Is that, so oh okay so that's the only that issue one. with Kailami <laughs> is that they don't have proper F one type runoffs and stuff. Right. Mm. So the circuit is fine. Like in terms of spectacle, it's a great circuit. But yeah, they just don't have the. They need to create some new infrastructure for that oh. to happen. Right. You guys have Which forgot is... about the homeland boys. What about India? Boot. Oh, boot Boot International Speedway Let's go Would be uh, great of course <laughs> no, yeah, it's, But it's not going to happen Yeah it's not going to yeah, happen, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> The state yeah. that things are in In India right now I don't think it's a possibility Absolutely. No. But I would yeah. like to see I There's nothing particularly special about The boot circuit It's just It's nice to have India on the, uh, the yeah. So now India yeah, isn't exactly. there And Singapore isn't there It's like oh man What yeah. do I have to look forward to 
Honestly, they should just bring back Singapore and put it in November. I don't mind. <laughs> you know, actually, if they have a odd, oh, but the gap is in November, is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I was kind of hoping for a double header in Spa, but uh, I guess that's not happening. No, it can't it's happen. Far off, but... I'm in the other circuit, which could probably go to Sepang if they want to go to Asia. Oh, Sepang but then good. Uh, even Malaysia is having quite high COVID. So yeah, yeah, this thing. Be high. Dude, if they they are gonna give Yas Marina, dude, I <laughs> I'm not. I reckon ready. it's either somewhere in the Middle East, mm-hmm. or they might do a double header in um, Americas. Well, they, I think they might Brazil. be doing Austin already. Yeah. Oh, oh, there's rumors Brazil might get cancelled because of COVID. Uh, oh my god! Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, all the good races are getting <laughs> are in the bin, yeah. man. Honestly. Even in Japan, I think Suzuka is have, has a question mark on it. Even though, like, I I don't understand why because Japan's already hosting the Olympics. So I don't yeah, don't exactly. All the all the good circuits are being F1 taken be? out. What? Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> come no, on, we shall man. see. Uh, maybe a maybe a triple header in Mexico. It's a race before Brazil. Oh, you know. I I say I'll take it. Mexico is quite a fun circuit. Yeah, it's quite a fun yeah. race. But yeah. uh, anything to prevent a double header in freaking Abu Dhabi, dude. <laughs> <laughs> My body can't take that. My body yeah. can't take two Abu Dhabis in two weekends, dude. That's <laughs> impossible. No, actually, yeah. it would be a double header in Saudi. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think that's a realistic way to go. Saudi or go back to Bahrain. Uh, I wouldn't Bahrain. mind going back to Bahrain. Bahrain is a uh, solid take circuit. Oval. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and they can even, uh, you know, like they did last year, they actually modified the circuit. They took away a few of a, a few of the turns so exactly. to make a completely mm. different circuit. So I mean, anything is possible. We'll see if it happens. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And I think right now we've been running for almost an hour. <laughs> <laughs> we should move on. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, moving on to double of the week. Okay, double um, of the week. Uh, Steph Josh Russell for me. Yeah, true. Okay. George, uh, okay, I'll say George Russell, I guess. Yeah, George Russell for making it into Q3 in Williams mm-hmm. for the first time. I was going to say Max Verstappen because he got the pole, he got the win, and he got the fastest lap. It's yeah. a triple crown for him today. Yeah. yeah. Oh, speaking of fastest lap, uh, I think this is this just a detail I'm throwing in right now. I think the first, the sprint race winner actually gets a championship point. No yeah, matter they where get three. They, they get three. three? Yeah, yeah, top yeah. three. Oh, uh, the podium spots are three to one. No matter where you finish during the race. Yes. Oh, dude, that's big. Yeah. Oh. So in terms of championship, that's going to be pretty big. Yeah. That's going to be massive. Yeah. yeah. Even in constructors, let's say if McLaren try to get up. Oh to yeah, absolutely. The that's like up a lot. Yeah, that yeah. might be McLaren's almost. Well, if if it was a regular thing, I think that might be McLaren's key to kind of beating Mercedes. But mm. uh, since we are only seeing it in three days, I don't think it will have that much impact. Yeah. Yep. It remains to be seen how how good or how bad it will be. <laughs> yep. Personally, I'm not yep. complaining about seeing um, three different, like having three entertaining days of racing, I guess. Yeah. I mean, we, we shall right. reserve our judgment after the third yeah, race. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any other mentions for Dub of the Week? Uh, no. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I guess no, not really. I guess you could say Carlos because Carlos fought back pretty well from behind to take P6. Mm. Uh, I think so both uh, both Ferraris had a good race. Both Ferraris had a really yeah. good drive. Yeah. You could say Ferrari, I mean, with the car they have, I guess P7, no, P8 and P6, right? Uh, P8, P8 and, and P5. Oh, yeah, P5. Yeah, 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 first, yeah correct. first penalty, correct. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that's pretty good actually for Ferrari yeah. if you look at it. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'll say uh, double of the week is Russell. I'm happy giving it to Russell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I have a small little honorable mention for double of the week. Okay, that is my friend in England who saw the Alpine car in real life. Oh, okay, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, we saw that. <laughs> yeah. I know you're watching or you're probably listening to this. Yeah, talking about you. Okay. <laughs> um, and with that, I think we can uh, wrap up this episode. It's uh, episode number five now, and uh, it's been great doing this. So once again, please do check us out on YouTube. Please subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel. Please follow our YouTube. Uh, please follow us on uh, Spotify. Both these places as the Next Team Podcast. And we are also on Instagram at the Next Team SG. So do follow us there as well. And we'll be back after Silverstone to talk about that race. So until then, ciao guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.